This is eHobbyist Blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers, retirees, students, and other not so nefarious characters who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. This video presents a spreadsheet summarizing the research that was previously done. It presents the results of a more detailed functional analysis for the project, and it evaluates a buy versus build decision for the project. What I have here is a spreadsheet summarizing the results of research I did previously. And there are six different units. The first one was the original radio electronics unit. Then there's a CMOS design unit, also in Radio Electronics Magazine. And four uh, commercial units, one from LN Co. and three of them from Global Specialties. What I'm doing here is to present the functional components of the prototyping system given what was uncovered during research and as summarized in the previous spreadsheet. So we start off with something that looks like the original breakdown of the functional components or any changes in the enclosure. Well, there aren't any changes. I know I need an aluminum enclosure. I've got to dissipate a considerable amount of heat being generated by the external and internal power supplies. So I would prefer to have something that can cool using a convective flow of air rather than to stick a uh, fan in. And I need a reasonably large amount of panel space, left to right, uh, 12 inches on top, and 10 inches top to bottom, as well as some panel space uh, up front, and I prefer a sloping panel. In terms of the breadboarding component, I like the uh, standard breadboarding sockets. Three of them are put together, gives you a good 6 inch by 6 inch breadboarding space. I like to have the uh, breadboarding sockets epoxy to a rigid substrate like epoxy fiberglass or uh, perhaps acrylic uh, plastic so that they're not going to be moving around because I need those sockets to be attached to Velcro and that's how I've decided I want to attach the breadboard to the enclosure because that then allows me to do some breadboarding on a set of sockets and if something crops up while I'm working on that, I can just lift off one set of sockets and Velcro another one in. I like the idea I've seen on Global Specialties units and on others of using power rail breadboarding sockets. I need uh, six inches long on top, probably, and at least eight rows of them. And in addition uh, to, the, to the standard breadboarding sockets, I want to see some power transistor sockets to accommodate TO3s, TO66, and TO2220s, which are not uh, easily breadboarded to a standard breadboard socket. The leads are too fat and just not, not on appropriate 0.1 inch matrix. And I've been thinking about using edge card connectors permanently installed to the top panel of the breadboarding system, the prototyping system, that would accommodate the standard edge card connectors that I used to use, and I don't know how standard they are of late. In terms of power supplies, well, we have to consider AC power, external power supplies that are available to the circuits under development, and we also need to consider powering internal components. The AC power, well, I need some sort of an in inlet socket with a fuse, power switch, and indicator. I need to have the power switch and indicator visible, probably attached to the front panel or to the top panel. Could use some EMI uh, filtering and some MOVs to uh, shunt any transients. 
You would think that's unnecessary for uh, New York City, but I've blown a hi-fi unit. And yes, occasionally lightning strikes nearby and you get transients. And then there's the issue of AC power transformer or transformers. In the external power supply, uh, I want to try to keep each of these uh, external supplies floating so that they can be interconnected at will and not connected in any way that would lead to problems later on in applying instruments uh, to the circuits under test. I want a standalone variable positive uh, power supply going from 0 to plus 20 volts at 500 milliamps. Then I want a dual tracking power supply. Also, uh, positive 0 to plus 20 volts at 500 milliamps, and a corresponding negative tracking supply to 500 milliamps. And then finally, I need some digital power, plus 5 volts at 1 amp, possibly with a USB uh, socket to, to provide power out for those things that are powered through USB, and plus 3.3 .3 volt power supply, I find increasingly that numerous sensors and uh, digital components are, are using the, the greener 3.3 volts. And I would like to see a monitor on each one of these three external supplies so that I can view in real time, preferably in analog monitors, analog uh, uh, meters, indicating voltage on each of the supplies and a current. Now, on the internal supplies, I intend to use package voltage regulators. I need plus and minus to power uh, digital amplifiers, op amps and the like. And plus 5 volts will probably be uh, TTL compatible digital components internally. Test inputs. Well, I really do like the notion of a sweep generator going from 0.1 hertz to 1 megahertz, sine, square, triangle, and along with an adjustable duty cycle that can convert a square wave to a pulse and a triangle wave to a ramp. Also like a TTL compatible or CMOS compatible sync pulsed output that can be used to sync to an oscilloscope or the like. If I've got a, a sweep generator, I need something to sweep it with, and I'm considering a ramp generator. It doesn't have to be very high in frequency, but it, it does need to sweep both in linear and logarithmetric so that one can get a Bode plot, also a TTL or CMOS sync output. I've seen the pulse, the notion of pulse or clock generators bi-phase generators going from 0.1 hertz to 1 megahertz, and maybe that's useful, and if I have room, I might consider creating it. Also, as test inputs, I need some debounced switches, at least two of them, complementary open collector outputs, and uh, logic switches. They may also need to be debounced, and... I like the notion of uh, making a positive one, either the standard TTL compatible or connected to either the positive external supply or uh, more likely a standard voltage being generated by the uh, prototyping system. Test outputs. I like the notion of bi-state logic indicators. I'd like to see 12 of them, at least 8 for a standard 1 byte uh, generated output, and 4 extras to deal with sets and resets and clocks and so forth. I'd also like to toggle these things between uh, one shot on and just a, a static state indicator. I like the idea of an 8 ohm speaker, if it's small enough to fit into the case. <laughs> well, just bare bones to be connected to audio signals output. And something I discovered recently, which I need to do some further research on, I, at this point, intend to build an oscilloscope into the prototyping system, which is also a logic analyzer, a frequency counter, a voltmeter, a waveform generator, and 
It's got a USB interface to uh, record and store data to a PC. The only problem I have with it is that it is uh, all set up as a logic level 3.3 volts, and most of the work that I've done and possibly will do is 5 volt TTL compatible. But I also want to be able to work with uh, other logic forms where binary 1 is 3.3 uh, volts and uh, ranging on up to uh, 15 volts in the case of CMOS. So I would need to be able to translate those levels. Finally, finally, I'm done. I'm done with analysis and research, the most dreadfully dull and boring parts of a project. And I never quite liked it. But I found in the past that every time I don't do it, I wind up floundering around trying to figure out what it is I'm doing, going around in circles, getting caught up in one dead end after another. And what's worse, if I don't have a fairly detailed functional specification of what it is I'm doing, I just keep changing things. I keep improving things until eventually I just give up in despair and go on to something else. I never know when I'm done. And that's what the functional analysis does for you. It gives you a direction and it tells you when you're done. Now, there are people who can get along without it. There are people who are uh, professionals who have electrical engineering degrees who don't need to do this sort of analysis and research, but I do. Well, that leads to the next piece, which is a decision. Buy, build, or bail. Well, if I wanted to buy something, and if I had the money, I'd probably take a good look at uh, the Global Specialties 507 unit, although I have my doubts as to the ruggedness of that unit. And so I'd probably, if I bought it, want to put it through its paces, beat it up a bit, and make sure that it was of sufficient ruggedness to stand up to the kinds of use I would intend to put on it. However, at a price of $1,100 for the unit, I think that's a bit too much. That leaves build or bail. Well, I'm not going to bail. I'm sorry. I didn't go through all of this research and stuff after decades of uh, wanting to build this thing and then decide it can't be done. Well, it can be done. It can be done as long as it's done incrementally. I don't want to try to do everything all at once. I want to build functional components of the system, and at any given time, I want to have something that works. And so I want to have a breadboard attached to an enclosure. That's, that's, that's an advantage. And then later a power supply, and then later some test inputs, and so forth. So in the next video, I'm going to present the enclosure. I don't normally get enclosures this early, but I wanted to make sure I had this in time. And then I'm going to start constructing the breadboarding component of the system. The breadboard itself, its substrate, and uh, transistor sockets, and, and edge card connectors, and whatever else is part of that process. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. It's not all that difficult, and I promise to read it. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, vector graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.